You're listening to the voice of TK Coleman, and this is another episode of TK's Two Cents. Today, we're going to talk about faith, force, and freedom, the three Fs. Let's dive right in with tweet number one. I don't know who needs to hear this, but you're entirely free to just speak your message without the preface, I don't know who needs to hear this. Have you seen that phrase going around? There are a lot of posts on social media that begin with that preface, I don't know who needs to hear this, but, and then they give some piece of insight or advice that will help whoever needs to hear it live a better life. Now, I do not intend to mock the people who use that phrase. I do not intend to convey the point of view that it is some kind of sin to use that phrase, but I know for a fact that there is someone who needs to hear the following. It is not your job to be able to predict ahead of time who needs your message as some kind of prerequisite for speaking your message. If something is true, you can know for sure that someone somewhere needs to hear it. It may not be anybody that you know. It may not be anybody in your social network. But if it's true, there is someone that needs to hear it. Sometimes when we say things online that seem to be obvious, there are always people who, you know, come in the comment section and and, and they say, well, that's obvious. Why did that need to be said? But here's the thing. Obviousness is relative. There's no such thing as a universally obvious truth. What's obvious to you may not be obvious to me. What's obvious to me may not be what's obvious to you. It depends on your personal background. It depends how much knowledge you bring to the discussion. You can say something that's completely obvious to one person who's so annoyed with you for even saying it. And then there could be someone else over here that says, thank you so much for pointing that out. It's exactly what I needed to hear. You don't need to apologize to people who find what you say to be obvious. They can move on and they can go listen to things that are not already obvious to them. It's not your job to predict who needs to hear what you have to say. It's not your job to apologize to the people who don't need what you have to say. It's simply your job to speak the truth with conviction and with confidence. You have a voice for a reason. And if you have truth to say, someone needs to hear it. And more importantly, someone needs to hear it from you. Don't apologize for what you know. Speak up, speak boldly, and you don't have to announce before you say it. I don't know who needs to hear this. Just dive right in and say it. I guess if you have fun the other way, you have all the permission in the world, but you don't need it. You don't need it. Let's go to tweet number two. Faith and force have never been friends, and whenever they've tried to force it, It has always been at the expense of faith. All right, let's talk about faith. Uh, This is a term that is uh, most typically associated with religion and spirituality. You know, when I go to church, we make a profession of faith. We recite the creed together as a church. Or maybe if someone says, hey, what do you have faith in? We may say something like, well, I have faith in God, or you might say, I have faith in the goodness of humanity, or you might even say, I have faith in the stupidness of the stupidity of humanity, whatever it may be. We all have faith in something, meaning not that we all naively do everything that we're told in relation to some topic, but rather we all have a set of beliefs about what is good, about what is constructive. And we all have a lifestyle in which we express commitment to the things we accept as true. One of my favorite definitions of faith came from C.S. Lewis, who says, faith is the art of holding on to what you know to be true in spite of your shifting moods. Faith is about your worldview and the commitment that you have to it. Now, we all have faith in something. And when we have faith in something and we've experienced it as a positive impact on our lives, It can be easy to think, well, I've got to make sure that everybody else experiences the life-changing benefits of my faith. And it's easy to get really preachy, and it's easy to get really irritated when people say, hey, you know, I appreciate what your faith is doing for your life, but uh, I'm not interested in it right now. But I I don't want any of that right now. Or that's not consistent with what I believe, or "I, I think your faith is not true. It can be easy to feel threatened by that. And to feel like your faith is so good and so valuable that you need to employ force 
in order to get people to believe and behave in accordance with what you think is the best. Even if your faith is right, you nullify it by using force as a means of getting other people to adhere to it. Faith and force don't go hand in hand. Wherever there is coercion, creativity is compromised. Charity is compromised. Compassion is compromised. And everything that makes faith valuable becomes diluted and weak the moment you treat it as something that needs to be buttressed by force. By force. Faith is powerful all on its own. And if there is any validity to your faith, if there is any true power to your faith, if your faith is a faith worth having, then it doesn't need the support of force. What it needs is for you to embody what it means to work out your faith in day-to-day life. Let people see the example that you lead and let them be drawn to your faith with a genuine sense of curiosity. Don't force it. True faith respects other people's right to disbelieve, to be skeptical, and to even laugh at it if that's what they choose to do, because true faith is not threatened by other people's lack of faith. That's TK's two cents, y'all. That's all I got to say for today. If you're listening on the podcast, be sure to hit that, (laughs) give me that five-star rating. Be sure to write a comment. Be sure to subscribe. If you're listening on YouTube and you have anything that you want to hear me talk about, or if these things have been meaningful to you, please write a comment. And don't hesitate to share with a family member or a friend that you think might benefit from hearing these riffs. All right, y'all. Thanks for tuning in to TK's Two Cents. Peace.